key thing with home brewing and runoff is that you should never run off a beer without uh, rye whiskey in your hand. Oh, fantastic. I, I've heard that. I've heard that. Thank you. Cheers. Hey, I'm Josh. Welcome to Craft Beer Adventure Club. I'm joined by the co-founder of BrewDog, Martin Dickey. Nice and you. nice to meet you, my friend. So BrewDog is a multi-award winning brewery with the biggest selling IPA in all of Europe. And today we are going to brew uh, a fantastic recipe. We're going to brew one of the earliest beers the you earliest created. Beer. The earliest beer. So yeah, just out of curiosity, how much of this beer are you brewing every day now? This year we will brew about probably 300,000 hectoliters 300. of punk IPA. So we are going to add our uh, our very modest 10 gallons to that. So, you know, we like to do our bit on the show and, and contribute to that. So. That'll really help. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> Problem is, it's the wrong recipe. It's the old recipe. We can blend it in. Today, we're brewing on this beautiful system. Uh, it's by More Beer, and it is the Lowrider Brew Sculpture, version 4, I believe. And it is stunning. I am a massive advocate for uh, malt being mm -hmm. used as a bar snack. I think it's absolutely delicious. I always like to try those different, uh, those little sugars in there, especially pale malt, you get kind of that nice, just uh, really basic, uh, basic sugar and a little bit roasty, but like, uh, especially with like caramel and things like that. I just think it's delicious. I think they should just serve it on uh, on bar tables and just nibble away. Should as well. How much of this do you think you could get in your mouth and uh, eat it? It's very dry. I mean, half a glass. You want me to try it? Yeah, always. You don't feel like it's none. It's good, right? <laughs> ah, I'm nice. feeling good. I'm feeling yeah. good. I'm feeling good. Now I'm just going to go sit in a corner and I'm going to mash for an hour and then <laughs> I'm going to spew up beer at the end of the day. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was dry and horrible. So um, <laughs> yeah. Right, in terms of the quality check, you've done a good job. What do you think? Are we ready to mash Frank, in? I think we're ready to mash in, yeah. I always recommend with this, you can start off quickly and then sort of slow down as it thickens up. And we're basically, at this stage, we're just making porridge, right? We're just, we don't want any lumps or clumps because that's less surface area for the, for the water to extract all those uh, complex as fermentables and non-fermentables from our, from our malt. Yep. And when we uh, when we mash this when we mash this back in Scotland, we're using about a three to one ratio. Right. Lovely, lovely. So yeah, it should just be a nice. It's always hard to say, you know. It should be the consistency of porridge because um, I like porridge nice and thick. And uh, my partner likes it like, like runny, like drinking just, just like oat, oat liquid. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this is great. Already just smells fantastic. I love that. I just, it's one of those things. I don't know how it is for you in, in the brewery, but I still to this day, I never get bored of that first hit of that big malty aroma when you pour it in. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's like one of those smells that really kind of makes you feel at home and relaxed. Mm -hmm. You know, if you walk into a brewery and you get that amazing malt smell first thing in the morning. Yeah, it's welcoming and just, mm -hmm. yeah, it's lovely. The first thing we're gonna do is uh, volaf, which is just, Basically, recirculation. The reason we do this is for well, for many reasons, but uh, clarity being being a main one, and also with our systems, you have uh, we have like a filter on the bottom. The the, the filter on the bottom is. Uh, is, is uh, what we need to capture all those grains when, when we run off the wort, we're just getting the, the wort into our boil kettle and nothing else. So we recirculate it so all those like bits that come through can all rest on the top. So what, what we had was basically the big porridge sure. and we want to start recirculating on itself to mm -hmm. form a nice filter bed, mm -hmm. clarify the wort and once we're happy we can then start transferring into the kettle. Fantastic. I think we should start moving some dials and flicking some switches. I think you should. Okay, let me see here. On. On, on, so far so good. I'm, pu I'm pushing the button, I'm, okay. I'm going for it. Uh, All right, I'm gonna lower this a, bit, a little bit closer. Perfect. And first try, just like that, it works perfectly. Mm -hmm. What we have now is basically a loop. We have the water is coming through this tap here. It's running down through the pump. It's being forced up through this pipe here. And then our spar jam is just sprinkling that onto our grains. So all the bits from the bottom are coming all the way through the top and landing on the top. And this is gonna just aid in our clarity. So there you go. looks great. 
So at the start, you can see a few little bits in there, but I mean, oh, to be fair, already it's looking, it's looking pretty good. But the more we do this, the clarity is just going to get better and, and better. And yeah. I think it's really important to always taste the wort. You know, depending on whether it's home brewing or professional brewing, it could be a whole manner of things. Right. Um, but you're basically looking for taint. So whether it's a defect in the malt, uh, if, you, if you taste the malt, you can detect a little bit. But when you actually mix the malt with water mm -hmm. and you make that kind of porridge, and now you're extracting basically the essence of that malt, you can taste it a lot easier if there's something that's not quite right. Right. Mm. Or if mm. you're in a big brewery, maybe someone left some caustic or something in the line. <laughs> right, so, right. So a few things you should be looking for, visual cue mm -hmm. um, and also taste and smell. Yeah. Mm. It smells delicious. It just smells like a bakery. There we go. And we're also going to add in our Artanum. There we go. Beautiful. And when you're home brewing, you need to be really careful at this point when you're coming to the boil because mm. if you don't catch it right, it's coming straight over the top. But once yeah. you get the hops in, you know it breaks down some of the surface tension and, and it'll you'll get a nice rolling boil after that. But yeah. be careful, especially if you're dressed like this with a you know, exactly. you don't, you don't want to get burnt. We're risking life and limb here, you yeah. know. My favorite thing is when you have those first hop additions mm. and the aroma just bursts out of those hops. It's delicious. So there's three hops. Well, you, three hops that we've used throughout the uh, the beginning and the middle, which yeah. are our uh, crystal. Our, Don't need yeah. to talk about them. Our crystal. Which one's here? Is this our Chinook? And Done. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And then we got one. Uh, wow. One different one, which is our Motueka. Mm -hmm. So let's talk. We talked about Motueka a little bit, which is the the New Zealand hot, right? And we we don't use this anymore. You you replace this with Nelson Sullivan. Is that correct? That's correct. Yep. So we changed Motueka to Nelson Sullivan. But I think that's one of the key differences in in, in punk versus. I guess American similar type IPAs mm -hmm. was that we were using hops from the southern hemisphere sure. uh, and they tend to give you a slightly different flavor profile uh, than than the Washington hops right right um, slightly more um, tropical in their nature you know if you think of uh, Nelson Savin in particular mm -hmm. it's very reminiscent of a Sauvignon Blanc so you know it's gooseberry it's um, kiwi some of that lychee character and uh, with with Motueka we were pulling out all these types of flavors uh, into the beer what we found over time is that we wanted an intensified version and that's why we switched from Motueka to Nelson Savin. So I'm just giving this a big stir now because I want to make sure that all the hops are soaking in there and just making sure we're getting all that lovely hop goodness. And what you can really see as well is, is the amount of resins and oils in mm. the hops because over the top of the surface of the wort you've got a slight, it's almost, it almost looks like an oil slick, you know, the slight uh, translucentness to the, to the surface. That's fantastic. So yeah, we're gonna leave these to soak for 10 minutes or so and then come back to it and we can get it cooled down. I would say, I guess it depends how we're gonna cool it down. Sure. Uh, how do you want to do that? I'll, I'll show you. So okay. I've brought uh, one of my old tools, which is our immersion chiller, which is this guy here, a simple, a simple coil. Um, and we're just going to actually dump this right into our beer. I've had this soaked in basically just a sanitizing solution. Okay. So we're gonna, it's gonna be uh, per uh, perfectly fine to add to our, add to our beer. Okay. And we're gonna run cold water through it, run some cold water off into a bucket. We can use that later to clean or someone else can use it later to clean. Yep. And, uh, we'll, uh, and then we'll, once it's cool enough, we're gonna run it into our, uh, into our fermenters. Perfect, well if we're gonna use this style of cooling, let's chuck it in just now and start, uh, start chilling the work. Yes. Sounds good. There we go. Um, okay. So while this is cooling down, mm -hmm. what shall we do? So this water now uh, is coming in through this pipe here, and it's I'm coming stuck. in cold, and then it's coming out of here, absolutely not quite boiling, but super hot. And that's how the heat exchanger is going to work. So important when you're when you're home brewing. Just a thing to know. Make sure that you do move the uh, the chiller around every so often because you do get heat pockets, and it can take even longer for it to for it to cool down. Sure. Uh, be careful when you pick it up because your in input your intake pipe is going to be super cold, but the output one is going to be super hot. So, so yeah, we're just going to move this around ever so slightly, and we just leave that to leave that to cool. Mm -hmm. Key thing with home brewing and runoff is it should never run off a beer without. Uh, rye whiskey in your hand. Oh, fantastic. I, I've heard that. I've heard that. Thank you. Cheers. Okay, okay. so this one is going to be the Tree to Brand 2007 Punk IPA recipe. Right, exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this one 
is going to be the 2018 Martin Dickey dry hopped but also foraged from things around us Martin Dickey. Okay, let's do it. Okay, nicely balanced. You're going to slice, slice these, throw them up and slice them up and like We'll brew, we'll brew the 2018 Martin Dickey with mystery fruit. We're going to gather as many mystery fruit as we can, make it with this, hopefully not poison anyone, and yeah. then, yeah, we'll be good to go. Mystery fruit, probably grapefruit. Final thing to talk about. We, mm. we know what we're going to be doing with our two beers. Yeah. We just have our our, our yeast. Yes. Uh, we uh, This is a, a white yeast smack pack. So basically what this means is uh, it has some yeast nutrient in there. Earlier, I... Uh, Give it a good old whack. Spank. Yeah, I gave it. Spank it. I went off, gave it a spank by myself. Uh, it's now. Happens. It's now swollen. Yep. Happens. <laughs> when we take our fermenters to where we're actually going to ferment our beer, mm -hmm. we're going to add our yeast in, and that yeast is going to uh, that yeast is going to start eating all those sugars. Yeah. For you guys at, uh, at Brewdog now, when you first started, were you using the like the dried yeast sachets? No, and we always used a uh, liquid. Always liquid used liquid. Yeast. Yeah. yeah. Felt that gave you know gave us a, a beer that that we were happier with you know mm -hmm. we, we loved uh, what a liquid culture gave you versus uh, dry yeast sure. yeah. so from a very early stage we were using liquid yeast mm -hmm. but only in the last few years have we been able to propagate that from a you know a slant right. cold cold held slant all the way through into the beer I mean, yeah, so the last thing we need to do with these guys is just put these in a place that's going to be perfect for fermentation. That would be uh, somewhere that's going to be around for these 70 degrees Fahrenheit and then hold them there for, uh, hold them there for a week, I think, and uh, they, should be, they should be good to go. Then we can bottle them, keg them, do what we want, and uh, yeah, then we'll give them, a, give them a try. Okay, so the 2007 version is that, the yep. 2018 version yep. is that. We're going to dry hop it with, what, Motueka? <coughs> more Motueka. <coughs> It's 2018, so I think we need some Citra and some uh, Simcoe in there. And then we need some of these amazing, probably grapefruit peels. Probably grapefruit peel. So uh, let's just get these bad boys signed. Okay. So this is the... 2000, 2007 Martin Dickey. <laughs> I'll tell you that. 2007. Love it, love it. And then this one. Uh, this is the 2018 new okay. special Motueka Citra Simcoe mystery grapefruit, maybe not grapefruit, fruit thing. And the, pool, and the pool for everyone that's wondering is just here. You can show them. <laughs> They've seen TV before, they know how it works. And that's it, my friend. We're done. It's been a beautiful, a beautiful day. Brewing with Martin Dickey. It was everything that I thought it was gonna be. It was fantastic, it was fun, it was wild. What was it like brewing on a brewing on a, a smaller system with not James? <laughs> Safer, <laughs> definitely safer. And the best thing about uh, just hanging out uh, in LA with no danger and a much smaller set and simpler thing that we have to do is that you can just have a beer or spirit in every step. It's true, it's true. Best way. It was fantastic. I think it just, it, it, it fueled us. It means the beer that we've created is just gonna be, just gonna be much better, I think, I think. But, Thank uh, you. Yeah, it did. Thank you, my friend. It was a good day. Okay. This is good to know. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna.